Let me start with announcement from our SI leader. Malaki, go ahead. Buddy, um, I'm just uh, wanted to announce to you guys that I found a, um, a time and day for our uh, SI sh sessions. So um, our normal sessions are going to be on Tuesday and Thursday um, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Put that in chat just in case. Um, so what those are going to be is I'm going to create some material for you guys to work on together. And it's going to be more of a structured study session um, where we kind of work through that together. Um, so you can attend both of those if you're into, if that sounds like a good thing to you, have a little bit of guidance when it comes to the material. Um, and then the other kind of session I'm going to have is the drop-in session, um, which is going to be on Friday um, from 11 o'clock a.m. to noon. And in those sessions, I'm just going to be in a Zoom call and you guys can come in and ask whatever you need. So um, I'm not gonna have any material for you guys to work on, but if you have something that you're stuck on from the homework, or maybe an old test problem that you don't quite understand, um, then you can come in and ask me about it and I can uh, help you out. So um, those are going to be starting this week, actually. So my first session is going to be tomorrow and then it's gonna be Thursday and Friday and then that's gonna continue for the rest of the semester. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Malaki. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, start with what we plan to do for this for today again the today's your monday wednesday class will assume that you have watched the lesson for today like lesson four like meeting number four uh, means you have watched lesson four and you also have watched the recording from uh, the previous tuesday thursday session okay i know it's not your class Okay, but I supposed to cover just the same thing. Now, instead of repeating it and you wait until the class time, uh, you can just watch it uh, at your own time. And we use this time, your class time, to go even further answering problems from my old test. Okay, now uh, I will work on some problems from string 17. Not all, not all, because this is test one and we are not done with the material for test one yet. <clears throat> but there are some problems can be done already from this uh, test one. I think like at least one third of them, maybe even one half. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, at least one third, at least one third. Okay. Now, uh, first question, line A contain, let line N contain this coordinate and B contain another coordinate perpendicular to line A. Find equation of line A. The first one, we need to find the slope, right? The slope of a line, if you are given uh, two coordinates, will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we compute, we get negative 8. Oh, that's a nice number, huh? Negative 8 over 8, that's negative 1. So that's the slope. Now, therefore, uh, the equation of the line must be y equals to a negative x plus b and because it contains two negative eight then i plug in the coordinate so b equals to negative six so the equation of line a is given by y equals to a negative x minus six Please interrupt me anytime you have any question. Okay. Now, uh, line B, find the equation of line B. Now, uh, line B is perpendicular to line A. Therefore, uh, the slope of line B must be negative reciprocal of the slope of line A. 
Okay, in other words, then the question of line B is y equals to x plus b hold on i think i i make a mistake big mistake here i look at the wrong coordinate yeah i look at the wrong coordinate here i'm sorry so this is not correct professor is, is there an easier way to do this uh you have other way go ahead but i think the way i do it is already quite easy yeah but i don't like that method it's kind of I'm yeah, uh, go go ahead. This this is something from your oh, algebra one, right? I don't I don't know any other methods though. So ah, if you yeah. don't know any other method, well, how can you come up to this class? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm here anyway. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, this is this is uh, this is actually quite simple. You find oh. the slope, and then using the slope, you find the the equation. Oh, do you mind showing me the simpler way? I don't really uh, this like is, this, these extra this, steps. This, this is the simpler way, as I know. Really? With yeah. all these extra steps? I don't think that's uh, it sounds uh, very simple. Well, well, if anything, well, it, don't, it only further complicate things. Uh, now I this, don't is, this is very simple already. Welcome to Krikakus. Oh, oh, of course. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah. how you been? I'm OK. Sounds good. Anyway, um, so what are we looking at? Then. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Let me mute myself again. I'm usually uh, too shy to talk. This is negative a equals to two plus b. So it's the same slope, right? So only I need to fix this earlier because I look at the wrong, I look at coordinate from line b uh, and that's the wrong one. You can use coordinate from this one, which I did, or you can use this one also. Either one will be okay, will give you the same, uh, the same equation for line a. No. Thank you for highlighting. It makes it easier to see. Okay. Uh, I cannot highlight everything though. So I just oh, highlight it and then I just highlight the then important I parts. The ones that you. Uh, I try to just mention important ones. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, B will be negative 8 minus 2. That's negative 10. So that's uh, line B will then be given by Y equals to X minus 10. I somehow think this is way too easy, but because the slope is too easy, yeah, the slope is just negative one. I was expecting the slope to be a, like a strange number. To be honest, me too. Seventh grade math usually tricked me, so I always um skipped right over it. I learned that in like middle school, but I didn't really pay attention enough to um actually. Now then, get now you yeah. yeah, now you know you need to pay attention. Yeah. Right? Okay. Part C. Find the distance of. Uh, coordinate zero zero to line B. Now this question actually requires a lot deeper work. So let's say this is line B. Let's say this is line B. This is origin. The question is to find the distance from this origin to line B. Now when we say distance from one point to one line, it refers to the shortest distance. Therefore, this has to be perpendicular. Professor, do you mind remind me what perpendicular means? Uh, uh, that's from your, your geometry, which is required. Oh, yeah, already, let me, right? let me. That's 90 degrees. Oh, yeah. Right, right angle. Now, then to find uh, the distance here, there are two different ways. I will show you the first way now. And next week, I think I will come back to this question showing you the second way. Now, the first way will be a bit long, but quite basic. This is our plan, method one. Actually, I kind of like learning both methods. It yes, that's why I will, simpler. I, I will, uh, I will I like show you, know, hold, yeah. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I will show you method two next week. That's what I said earlier. Okay, okay, okay. That's why, like second, second. If, if step A and step B already complicated for you, like what you say, then why do you want two methods? That's true, but... I like the complexity of having both situations and just in case I forget one of them. So earlier you one. want me to give you simpler one and right now you're complex or you want a complex one. I'll take I'll take both actually, if okay. you don't mind. Okay, okay, but I do let uh, method two later, uh, later, next week, okay. okay? I could stay for lesson one. Lesson one is fine with me. Method one. Yeah, I mean method one. Okay, so this is our plan of work. Let me do it in green. So first I will find the equation we will find the equation of the line 
perpendicular to line B passing 0, 0. So basically, we want to find the equation of this line first. Okay, and then second, find D intersection. Let me call that line C. Find D intersection of line B and line C. Find this point. Okay, and then the third, then we'll find distance from origin to uh, that point. That's our, uh, our plan, okay? So it's not one step, it's multiple step. Now, let's go on. So uh, the first one, when we execute this plan, that's already blue. Okay. First one, uh, the slope of line C will be negative reciprocal to the slope of line B. Now, therefore, we see that's one over negative of one over one, that's negative one. That's the slope for line C. Now, because the Y intercept is zero, zero, the equation of line C must be given by Y equals to negative X plus zero. Well, that's again, that's because the Y intercept, Y intercept of line C is zero, zero. Okay, so it's basically plus nothing, plus zero, which we usually don't write. The second step we will find D we only write zero for clarification, right? That's right. Uh -huh. oh, okay, I forgot. Okay. And then now to find the, inter the intersection of those two lines, uh, line B has Y equals to X minus 10. Line C equals to E is given by Y equals to negative X. Professor, it's not too much trouble. Do you mind slowing down? I have a hard time um, actually writing down all this. And then when I add, I will get 2y equals to negative 10, y equals to negative 5. Now, if y equals to negative 5, borrowing from line C together with that, then we know the x will be the opposite of that. Therefore, the intersection is 5 comma negative 5. So going back here, this coordinate here is five comma negative five. This is origin. Now the last step is the one we need, the, the distance, right? The distance here, the distance D. Okay, so what is the distance from zero, zero to five, zero? That's basically uh, X2 minus X1 square plus Y2 minus Y1 square. Because x0 and y0, I'm sorry, x1 and y1 are both 0, 0. Now, this will give us uh, 25 plus 25, which is 50. That's the d squared. So d is square root of 50, which is 5 square root of 2. That's the distance. Okay, so uh, take a look on these steps first. Now this step is a bit longer. This step is a bit longer, but each one of them is actually quite simple. Okay, now one of the thing you need to learn in pre-calculus is to deviate a, a plan, maybe multiple step plan uh, to solve a problem. Okay, instead of looking the question and then, oh, this is the answer. Oh, look at the, expect to just find the answer by just looking at that. That's not in pre-calculus, okay? That's yeah. maybe pre-algebra or algebra one, but in my class, you need to show work and expect questions like that. Number two, suppose we have two coordinates be the endpoints of a diameter. So you have a diameter, okay, of a circle. 
diameter was the distance between the uh, two endpoints. Uh, yes. Okay. So from negative one three, that's the coordinate of one endpoint of the diameter, and the other one is seven negative five. Now then, find the center of the circle. Now notice that the center of that circle must be the midpoint of this diameter. Now then I use the formula for midpoint that is x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. So c equals to 6 over 2, that's 3. And then negative 2 over 2, that's negative 1. How about the radius? So the center is here. Now we find it. That's a 3, negative 1. Now then how about the radius? The radius is the distance from the center to the circle. So you can use the distance uh, this way or the distance this way, either one. So the distance squared equals to, let me use 7, negative 5 x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that would be 4 squared plus, oh, this is negative 4 squared, 16 plus 16, which is 32. So the distance is square root of 32, which we can simplify to be. So you're going to lost me. Where did you get the fours from? Which four? The um, D2, the second line. The one here? Yeah, where did those fours come from? Seven minus three. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Now, part C, find the equation of the circle. We know that the center is three negative one and the distance squared is 32. Actually, we can just use that. Right, that's actually represent. Uh, I think I need to clarify one thing. This d here, not radius, not diameter, but radius. That's radius square. So why do we still use d for it then? If it's radius, why can't we just use r? You can, well, but d also stands for distance, so yeah, I can but, use d. But yeah, you could use d, but so either kind of, way, right? Yeah, that kind of yeah. threw me off though. Oh, well, okay, then that's why I mentioned it that you, you need to see that as a radius. Oh, okay, I mean, okay, okay. I mean, if I write it as a radius, then you can ask me, can we still use D as a distance? And that's why we don't put a two on top of the D, right? Because it's only half of the distance, right? It's not squared or- That's need... distance squared, that's radius, that's, that's why it's distance formula. Do you mind going off? Uh, never mind. Now then, uh, the equation of the circle will then be given by x minus x, the center, the x of the center squared plus the y minus the y of the center squared equals to radius squared. Find the y-intercept of the circle. Thank you, Malaki. Uh, yeah, uh, our SI leader just remind us that uh, tomorrow is your first session for SI. Okay, the y-intercept, to find y-intercept, x equals to zero. We have the equation of the circle up here, right? Now you plug in x equals to zero, you will get negative three squared plus y plus one squared equals to 32. So nine plus five plus one squared equals to 32. Wait, Professor, why is that guy hanging out in our class anyway? Who is that guy? Oh, the one that just left, the group leader? I wonder if you watched the- uh... Nah, I usually don't pay attention to things that are unnecessary. It is necessary. That's in your first day of class. You're supposed <laughs> to watch that recording. Sorry.
You can't just say it's not necessary for you, but you ask questions like that. And then apply square root property, move the one to the other side. Now that's the Y component of the Y intercept. Now remember Y intercept, just like X intercepts are coordinates. So that is not your final answer. You have to write Y intercepts are in coordinate form, negative one plus square root zero comma that's y intercept. So 0, comma, negative 1 plus radical 23 and 0, comma, negative 1 minus radical 23. That's the y intercepts. Now, if I ask you the x intercept of the circle, then you set the y equals 0 and solve for x. Okay, remember your final answer still have to be uh, in coordinate because it's x-intercept, right? Let's go on to question number three. Now, this question number three uh, is closely related to what you learn, uh, supposed to have learned from uh, lesson four, like solving equations. The first question, we have something squared equals to four over nine. Now, it's already completed squared. It follows this pattern it follows the pattern that blah squared equals to a positive, con positive constant. So our plan is blah equals to plus minus square root of C. That's our plan. Okay, now then I will apply square root property. We get three X minus one half equals to plus minus square root of four over nine, which will give me plus minus two thirds. And then I move the one half to the other side becomes plus one half plus minus two thirds. Let me split it first. So either three X equals to one half plus two thirds three X equals to one half minus two thirds. I think combine like terms, I, uh, combine like fractions, that's three over six plus four over six, that's seven over six. Three over six minus four over six, that's negative one over six. Now then, uh, to find the x, I will divide by 3. That's 7 over 6 divided by 3 is the same to multiply by 1 third. And x2 will be negative 1 over 6 divided by 3 or multiplied by 1 third. That's negative 1 over 18. That's for part A. So in this question, actually more than just solving quadratic equation, you still need to remember how to solve, uh, how to compute fractions, uh, add and subtract fraction, dividing, therefore multiplying by the reciprocal, besides just simply square root property. Professor, does that guy mm -hmm. that left our class teach the basics like that? I'd like to retouch on them if that's what he does. Uh, you can talk to him. On I Friday, I, I believe. Ah, uh, Friday. Yeah, that's too long. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And part B, <clears throat> we have the sum of two square root. Now, uh, the plan will be that we isolate one of the radical. Okay, we isolate one of the radical, either one square root of x plus two or square root of x minus three, you isolate. Okay, and then let's say I isolate this uh, square root of x minus three. So I subtract both sides by square root of x plus two. Now then uh, from here, I will square both sides. Just to clarify, you square both sides to get rid of the square root, right? Or wait, wait, what do you call it again? Square both sides. For what reason? to get rid of the square root. 
And it always works like that. You can always get rid of the square root by putting the two on them. By squaring. By right, squaring. Right, because square root is the inverse operation of square. So to undo a square root, you square both sides. Now, but uh, be careful when you do square both sides. We are not, first of all, I mentioned in my lecture that we are not squaring term by term. So you're not, you are not squaring five and then squaring these. No, no, we are not squaring term by term. We are squaring both sides such that the right hand side here should be seen as a minus b quantity squared, which will give us a squared minus two ab plus b squared. Keep that in mind. That's a very, very common mistake that Thank I you for saw in, that. Uh, even in Algebra 1. Uh, by the way, this question came from my Algebra 1, something you're supposed to have seen last year. Yeah, Professor, I'm built like an animal. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to know. Sorry for sounding so stupid. Okay, x minus 3 equals to x plus 27 minus 10 square root of x plus 2. Now, I still have square root here. So what I want to do is to isolate that square root again. I will subtract by x. Uh, the x will cancel in this case. Subtract by 27. So there will be negative 30 equals to negative 10 square root of x plus 2. Divided by negative 10, I get positive 3. And then I square both sides. Mr. You just, I mean, Professor, you just uh, drop the, um, the, you just divide by 10 on the other side of 30, right? To get rid of the 10? Negative 10 to be more precise. All right, negative. Ne so this is 7 equals to x now. But uh, the thing is, in between the procedures we did here, we square both sides actually twice. And if you remember in my lecture, I say that every time you solve an equation that involves squaring both sides, we may get extraneous solution. So we need to Can check you explain this. what an extraneous solution was again? A solution that is not a solution we have uh, for the equation. What does that mean? It means when you plug that in, it doesn't give you the right answer. Why would you want that? Well, that's why we need to check. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. Yeah, uh, I really suggest you later on you watch the lesson. Yeah, I did, but but it, it sounds like you don't even know what is extraneous solution. Yeah, I don't know what's going on most of the time. Uh, yeah. Next time, ask me question. Do you have any question from those though? Questions from which ones? From my lessons. Oh yeah, I definitely do. But I'll, okay. I'll wait until um your office hours to ask you those because I don't want to. My office, yeah, my everyone. my office hours earlier before the class, not after class. Oh, how how early are they? Uh, it's in my syllabus. Let oh me show yeah, you. yeah. Um, was it nine to um? No, 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 no. Oh yeah, eight forty-five. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, look at your syllabus. Okay. Oh, sorry, Mister. So the the thing is, this is week number three, though. You know, yeah. so so it if you still. It no, it doesn't take, it, it, no, it, if it takes you more than one week, it's way too long, you know? Yeah, <laughs> but I like waiting until the class gets interesting to actually pay attention. Yeah, well, the, the thing is like, how late do you want to wait? This is week number three. You're supposed to have known that actually on the first day of class. Honestly, I forgot math because I haven't been taking it for It's a while. not about math. It's about you being a student, knowing where is your syllabus and know your teacher's office hour or have, where to find it. Oh, I know that it was like 8.45 or something like that, but uh -huh. I wasn't entirely sure. And you only get a five minute break in between classes. Okay, so? Coming back here, so part B, uh, I'm, I get the solution already, but I need to make sure that that's the real solution. So I need to check, remember, we need to check against the original equation. We need to check against the original equation. So I need to plug that x equals to seven into that equation. 
So square root of seven plus two plus square root of seven minus three is it equals to five? Okay, put that question mark on the top of that equal sign to show that we are actually questioning if this is this equation is true. Square root of nine plus square root of four is it equals to five? That's three plus two. Is it equals to five? Five equals to five. So it checks. Then you summarize x, so x equals to seven. Okay, remember every time when you solve an equation, not only in my class, not only in my class, in every math class, actually this is starting from algebra one, but this is the time you really have to know that, okay? That every time in when you solve an equation, there's a step in between you square both sides, then you need to check your final answer, okay? Because we, need, we may have something called extraneous solution. Now, going back to part, uh, going up, uh, this is part C now up here. Part C, now we have a question, absolute of something equals to a positive constant. Absolute of something equals to a positive constant, then the idea will be that absolute, uh, that thing equals to that positive constant or negative of that positive constant. So in this case, absolute of blah equals to five means blah. Do you mind repeating that again? I didn't catch that. Blah equals to five or blah equals to negative five. So basically the distance of something is from zero is five implies it's either five or negative five. The distance of an expression from zero is five implies that expression is equal, either equals to five or equals to negative five. Now, the thing is that expression may be as complicated as what we see here, but still the first step is the same. Uh, then blah equals to five or negative five. Now from there, then we solve uh, uh, independently. Okay. Hey, Mister, can you bring the norm, number line back? I, I didn't catch that. The number line, let me do it on the top so that it doesn't interfere with my work. So, so there's a total of 10 units of distance between negative five and five. Just to clarify, I, I don't want to sound ridiculous. Oh, well, right? well, your question doesn't need the absolute value idea. Oh, what okay. you ask, the distance from negative five to five is 10 is true, even without what we have here. I mean, that's always true. Now, what we are doing is that absolute of something, absolute of something equals to five means the distance of that thing is five units from origin, from zero. Now, what are the point that is five units from zero? Now, those points are five or negative five they have five units from zero. So if that point is either, that expression is either five or negative five, that's what I write here. Either that guy is equals to five or that expression is negative five. Now from there, then we will solve further uh, each one of them. Let me do the one on the left first. I will multiply by the LCD LCD was least common denominator, right? That's right. Okay, got you. Then subtract by 3x, I add 10, so x equals to 7. But we have other possible solution. Multiply by x minus 2, both sides negative 5, x minus 2, and then solve it. So I will get, I add 5x and I subtract by 4. So x equals to 6 over 8, which is 
three, four. So there are two solutions for this question. We're still working on the same problem? Yeah, still part C. Oh, sorry. If I sound too stupid, do you mind stopping me? I, I don't know my <laughs> limitations. Yeah, um, I, I don't mind you to interrupt me. Yeah, even though you know that you will be a lot better if you watch the lecture. Really? You don't mind that I cut you off at like every other second or um, question? I don't mind. I don't mind because... Oh, sorry. I just no, no, no. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind oh, at all. Uh, that's just, why... That's why That's why this is a, This is the basically a discussion. That if you have question, I in fact, I want you to interrupt me right away. But yeah. of course, it will be a lot better if you already watched the lesson such that this makes basically a review of what we have done in that lesson. Yeah, I still have but questions though. Mind. Okay, let's bring it up. I just insinuated that you um, didn't want anyone asking questions since it's so no, 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 no. Oh, no. sorry. No, I don't mind, I don't <laughs> mind. But at, okay. at the same time, at the same time, uh, it is basically, it could be because other students already know. Yeah, it, they probably get right? it and I'm just too dumb to realize that. Anyway, yeah. mister, um, can I ask you how, we, how was your day? I just barely wake up. Oh, <laughs> how you feel? Doesn't matter, right? <laughs> I'm teaching. Yeah. <laughs> so right. you can't feel anything while you're teaching or where's the passion? Uh, my passion is in teaching. That's why I teach. Ah, uh, thank you, mister. <laughs> I, I appreciate the way you, you taught the first lesson when you put a comical sense on it. It really caught my attention. Okay, great. But now, eh. Uh, in this part D here, in this part D here, we see that this expression, this guy here, is actually the square of this. Now, this question is difficult. If you take a look on the number of points for this question. Let Professor, me go uh -huh. can we go over negative 2 over 3 as the flying number? What does that mean again? That's exponent. That's if you don't exponent. mind asking me. Uh, why do I, what, what do I, you want me to ask you? Why is it floating just above the equation? That's exponent. Yeah, what does it mean? It means that's exponent. What's an exponent? Well, that's x to the something. X. That's exponent. And x to the something equates to what? Uh, that's what we need to solve here. Okay, okay, I got you. I'll just pay attention then. Uh, this question is, if you see this question part D is eight points. Now, one way you know if you do it, if you do okay for my test is this. The number of points for that question represents the number of minutes you need to solve that problem. Okay, so you don't expect a question that is eight points can be done in one minute or two minutes, especially not can be done by just looking at that. You need to show work and this will be a pretty long work. Okay. Professor, can you crack a joke? No. Okay. Then we see that this is basically a quadratic like equation. So y, I will set y equals to absolute of two minus three to the power of negative one third. Now, why do I do that? Because if I use this as my u, or in this case, my y, then this will be the square of that. Now notice that it forms a quadratic like equation where this is the square of this and this is a constant. Sorry for sounding like an absolute barbarian, but can you explain that again? I kind of uh, missed the whole point. A quadratic like equation means you try to look at that equation as a quadratic and then solve that first as a quadratic equation. So I will solve for that absolute something first. Once I'm done with that, then I will solve for that X. So I don't attack that X directly. How do you go about getting to the X? That's what I'm about to do. Because oh, that's, the you, that's the question. That's the, that's anyway that's the, the most, question. That's the most important part. You okay. almost made me miss the punchline. Okay, y minus three and y minus two, it's definitely factorable. So y equals to three or y equals to two, but we are not done yet. We just solve for our dummy variable here. What we really need to solve is this, that we- Did you say dummy variable? What do you mean yeah. by that? 
that's like kind of like a, a fake variable that we use to represent oh, like a pseudo something. variable, like an that's right, that's right. Thing. A pseudo. Uh, I, oh, I get what's going on now. <laughs> it's like kind of like to to help us simplify the writing. If, oh, I just thought I was just plain old stupid to realize how the real world works. Never mind. Um, carry uh, on. Absolute of two x minus three to the power of negative one third equals to three, or absolute of two x minus three to the power of negative one third equals to two. Hey, Professor, sorry about this, but do you mind slowing down for me? Uh, okay, I really think you already slowed me down so far. Sorry for being the extra baggage. No, no, I don't see it that way. Okay, well, I will just I will just run my show as usual, right? In the end, I will give you the same test. Yep, and I'll certainly perform well on that. But okay, I do need a lot of help to get there, like a mm -hmm. lot. And if you don't mind if slowing down for me, there's only like two people in here. I don't think yeah. they'll mind. Uh, the I way I see is like a lot of them actually yeah. will, will uh, watch the recording, right? I think it's, so, a, like, it's a superiority complex, you know? I think they're just too afraid nah, to ask nah, questions. Nah, 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 mister. Nah. No, nah, really? that's, that's not how I see it. Nah, I don't need to mister. conclude that way. No, don't You'll push never me. catch me being afraid of being stupid. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to conclude either way. There's no conclusion need to be done. It's like either they attend the class or not. So how do we devise the same answer? What do you mean by defies the same answer? How do we That's... get to the same point? Is there a faster way to do this? I think this is the fastest way. I kind of used to like math when I used to get it back in the day, but now that I don't get it, it's not it's not as good, but kind of good, you know? Yeah, well, but uh, really, I really think- uh... Do you want to hear my backstory, mister? No, no need, no need. Okay. No need. I didn't want to- Yeah, let's just wanna... go. Let's, let's go, just go to the- Let's just go to the material because then there are too many stories I need to listen while nobody listens to my story anyway. Ah, professor, I listen to your stories. They're funny. No need, but the thing is like this in this class, it's not about my story or your story, it's about pre calculus. Yeah, but why so can't let's, we have let's, both? No need, because there's, there's no need. We don't have time, even if we focus on pre calculus only, we won't have Fine. enough time. Professor, just hustle at the end, crack in some jokes, keep me entertained. Uh, well, I'm the, the only thing one. is like, the thing is, that's not what I'm supposed to do anyway. Why not? Why, no, why yes? What do you mean, why yes? That's not, that's not uh, but, question. You know, this class is pre calculus class. It's not cracking a joke class. Why can't it be? Why you, the, the thing is like, then I- uh, Professor, I, if you can make a reference to something and I'd understand, then why don't you do it? Uh, it only help me since I'd find it funny. Well, the thing is what I see is you don't help yourourself. Yeah, that's true. I don't really like, like to then, help myself. I like yeah, to just, so, um, so if you don't help, help yourself, if you don't help yourself, then how much do you want me to help you? You well, need to first. You I kind of, I'm still stuck on pre-calculus because I don't ask questions, but I this don't is really pre-calculus. Like... Welcome, and if you want to ask question, ask question. Oh, but I don't really, you. I don't, I don't appreciate you asking me about something else other than pre-calculus. Really? What if I? Have, what about if I told you my backstory? How I'm just a ghetto kid trying to get ahead in the world, you know? Uh, Simply, I just got tired of um being stuck in basic math, so I'm just now about to ask some questions. You know, I've forgotten how fun it was to do math. Well, you can come to my I office hour questions. for that. I got you, uh, Mister. Right, I'll be there. So, so that's. Yeah, um, I does don't think. Else, does anyone? I don't think it's a good. It's a good idea to spend our time for that. I mean, does I don't anyone, mind. I still get the same pay. Does, any, <laughs> <laughs> does anyone else talk in your um, classes? I don't want to take up the whole time. You know. Like, uh, it, I don't want you to treat, I don't want to treat you like my personal tutor or anything like that. Well, you have that right because you are here and- those Oh, really? Are, yeah, if you oh, are not here, I thought then... probably just too intimidating for me to ask questions. That's why I never asked. I always thought like everyone just assumed- But you, that... you asked a lot more questions actually. Oh, I just yeah. assumed everyone That's... knew. That's why I didn't ask any questions. No, 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 no. All right, we, I got you. So if we, I have- We don't need to make an assumption about other people. Oh, We don't yeah. need to do- so yeah, you, no need. Are no you need. saying that I shouldn't care about what other people think about me? Why? It's I don't I don't think so. To, to be honest with you, you should not care about what other people think about you. You should yeah, care that's about true. what you I see about yourself already. first, right? Nah, me, no, no, Mr. no. Don't let, let other people judge you. Don't let. Yeah, other, Mr. I mean, let me tell you this my is bad story real quick, man. Yeah, let, don't let other like people to judge anime. you, and therefore you don't want to judge other people at the same time. I got you. Let's right? treat this like an anime. Uh, so I grew up in the ghetto. I'm still ghetto. I sound ghetto. And well, I have access to the internet now, so I don't sound as stupid as before, but 
Yes. Anyway, can you continue? I am continuing. So I Thank cube you. both sides. Now I cube both uh, negative three. Take it to the power of negative three, actually. Let me write it this way. Take it to the power of negative three. I need more space. So how you been, Professor? You asked that question the fourth time today. I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'm still waiting for the answer. I, I And I gave you my answer. I'm okay. Oh. That's the fourth time I gave that answer, by the way. Oh, my bad. Do you mind if I have, if I ask the same question over and over again? I just want to reinstate what uh, I already know. <laughs> I don't mind. I will give you the same answer again. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, I, mean, I thought I was just plain old stupid or something. Uh, well, giving you different answer for the same question will be strange. I got you, mister. You could just explain it in different ways, and I'll probably follow along. You know, you could just reference anything. Like, do you watch Dragon Ball Z? What? You watch Dragon Ball Z? What's that? Um. Oh, Dragon Ball Z. It's an anime from, I think. Oh, the game. No, I don't the, play What game? The show. OK. Oh, With Goku. That's kind of, you never heard of Goku? Game. Mister, from, let yeah, me tell well, you about I'm, Goku. Uh, no need. Let's, let me tell you about No need? How can we continue this lesson if you don't know about Goku, man? You know what? He's my favorite character. <laughs> that, fool ain't afraid, that fool ain't afraid to swing. He, he look at anyone and he say, nah, what's next? Who's up? What's up? You know, basically he asks the same question over and over again and he never changes. That's what I like about him. Sort of reminds me of myself. Actually, I kind of think I just stole that off him or something. I like his swagger too. He walks around like he, like no one could whoop him. That's how I act in the ghetto, mister. That's how we get down here. So, mister, what area are you from? What do you mean? If you don't mind me asking, of course. What do you like, mean by your what zip area? Code? Like, nine, the only zip code I know is 90011 and then 90210. I guess that's not something you need to know. So I don't give that kind of information to students. Oh, yeah, of course. Or how ridiculous to me that I even ask. Okay, that's for the first branch. The second branch will do the same way. So I will take it to the power of negative three. I take it to the power of to the negative three such that the negative one third exponent disappear. Mister, is that guy um Michael just a pillar of intimidation? Huh? For the stupid people. I mean, I don't want to sound stupid or anything, but like, that fool only shows around when like, like, you know, there's like nobody here. I don't mind talking. And since he left, I feel a lot comfortable, you know? No, you he's, know? He, he's actually here to help you guys. Can I show up to his um, office hours again? Yeah, of course. If you don't mind, yeah. can you can we re go over the syllabus? I, I didn't ask any questions before. I was just uh, for I, my syllabus. You will see my office hour and what he just shared is basically his what, time. What were his suggestions? All right, all right. I show up for all of them. Can I show up to your Tuesday's class too, just in case I need extra clarifications? I don't yeah, want to sound too yeah. stupid. Uh, yeah, I don't want to carry. I don't want to carry myself like I'm. I don't want to carry myself like I'm an idiot or something. You can. You can. All right, I got you. I got you. You can. Actually, that's what I told other students. Oh, really? Then where yeah. are the other students? <laughs> you said Tuesday, Thursday class, right? Yeah. But where yeah. are the students for this class? Where they all go? Are they just going to watch I, the I, lesson at well, the end? Well, on the first day of class, I did say they don't need to attend the class. Oh, but they okay. need to watch the recording. All right, all right. So I'm basically free to ask any question I want since no one's here to stop me or anything like that. Uh, right? Not really, because I have in mind they need to actually learn the material from... Yeah, that's true. We'll get there eventually. So even though even though they are not here, I still need to go for the material. It's because just part they of the journey, mister. I'm just trying to alleviate the mood or something like that. I don't want to be like depressed or anything all day. Uh, the, you know thing is, the thing is, this is not a place for us to do that, though. Why not? Because this is a pre-calculus class. What's so scary about pre-calculus? It just comes before calculus. And if I know the basics of pre-calculus... Well, I, I don't know about you, but I still need to make sure that other students actually get it. Nah, mister, you could explain in the simplest form, but I still won't get it. That's the question. 
That's what's so, so I, I that's that actually makes me more to do this more, right? Instead of oh, doing less, right? So you so the word professor is just the word to intimidate us. Can I call you Mister instead? Yeah. Um, or can I call you just Thomas? Yes, I don't mind. All right, all right, all right, Thomas. How you been? The fifth time, I'm okay. I'll ask you like an eighth time too, like by the end of the lesson. If you don't mind me, of course, repeating the same question. I don't want to sound like I'm practicing an afro or anything like that. Uh, well, let's talk about that after class, maybe. No need. Why not right now? Well, because this is where I'm supposed to teach. But you are teaching me uh, some life lessons. Uh, I'm teaching you Precatus first right now. Yeah, but why can't you teach me both? What's so difficult about that? I cannot do both at the same time. That's the thing. You can't have fun and work at the same time? What uh, kind of world do you live in? Well, this world. What world? Uh, this world. What world? Like this. I don't have to explain everything to you. That's my life to start with. Why not? Why yes? You keep on asking a question that you, that you why not, but you don't even think why yes. Is there any requirement that I need to explain myself to you or my what? life to you? Who answers the question of why yes? How does that explain anything, mister? Because you what? insist on why not. Yeah, why not? No, I don't have to answer that. How come? I How just come don't have to. You see, even if I don't answer that, I still go on with my with my teaching, right? That's true. Carry right? on. So it's I, don't wanna, it, it, I don't want to. I don't want to take you, a ball in class time or anything like that. You are. That's oh, the sorry. thing. You are. Sorry, professor. Uh, so I'm done with the material from this. Actually, I, uh, uh, are you really done with all that material? I kind of blow right through everything, like just steamrolling real quick. We are not done with this material yet. The one I show you that blank here, I cannot do that yet right now. Why not? So I will do that because the material is in lesson five, lesson six right now. Why is it in are... lesson five and lesson six when I'm on lesson one? How does that even make sense? What do you mean by you are in lesson one? Yeah. This it's is. Well, then you are behind, you need to catch up because this is our lesson four. Lesson four already on like the second day of class? No, this is not the second day of class. What, this what is day? the third week. Oh, third week. I got you. I got you. Thomas? Yes. Uh, should it be 40 or 80 uh, on the last thing you did? The last one? I got 40. Okay. On 2x equals 40 over 27. You have 81 minus 1. You are right. Thank you. You are right. Mister, Thank you. how'd you let them catch you slipping? Come on. Well, I was working. Ah, why can't you work and play at the same time? Is that really that difficult? Work hard, play hard, do it at the same time. Even better. More efficient. I wonder how many of them successful right now. What? I wonder how many people doing such things successful right now. All of them? Uh, <laughs> Why can't you have fun and work at the same time? Because I don't see what's so difficult about that. Well, make it that's, you, you can do that, of course, uh, but you don't need to make other people do, to do that. Are you tired of me talking? I am. Oh, sorry. I'll just shut up from the rest, for the rest of the class. Because you are not asking questions about pre so you just distract uh, me right, from teaching. I got teaching. you. I got you. Consider, do you mind if I read the question? I like when the teacher calls on me. Okay, read the question. Because I always sound stupid in front of everyone. Consider that negative four comma five and two comma three. Yeah, what about them? Consider what? Consider these two coordinates, then part A, five. Why can't they just ask me then the whole question rather than break it up? Because parts? I have two, four questions from this. Can uh, we just situation? wrap them up into one question, one big old question, solve the equation all the way through? Then, so then, right through you, you, then you will have one question with four parts. Hey, Professor, do you know any old textbooks? I don't like new math. I prefer the old version, you know, the better version, the faster version. Mm. All this new stuff is just like extra, extra verbiage, you know? I feel like I jargon know. I simply don't understand. Like, what the heck is a three? And why, why is it flying up there, you know? Why is the exponent like just right above the number? Does that mean anything?
Morten? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, thank you for uh, correcting me earlier. By the way, are you okay? Hey, sorry, yeah. Morten, for like taking up your time too, because I, I, I don't want to sound too stupid, but like, uh, you know, you know how it'd be, right? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right. Sounds good. Now that I have your approval, um, can we carry on? Like a little, yeah, you know. So we have the slope for this line. Now notice that this is something we actually have done in earlier questions. So you know that the question about find the equation of a line is a question that I yes, almost Sorry always to ask interrupt in my you test. again, but mm -hmm. you might speaking up a little louder. I can't really hear you. I'm right in front of the microphone right now. Yeah, but I can't I can't really hear you. And I don't want to put the volume a little more up. Can you enunciate some words too? So I can actually get what you're trying to get at I'm working on the problem here can you read the problem out loud when you explain it that helps me focus you already read that earlier oh I mean like what you're doing like the steps can well I did the slow well, that's what I say there but of course if you talk about something else you won't pay attention to me so my first step is I get the slope and then from the slow I try, we try to get the equation we try to get the equation of the line Right, and I say that this is something we have done earlier in the previous sample test, right? So we basically repeat it again, the same procedure, of course, with different numbers. Now, then we use one of the coordinate. Let me use coordinate two comma negative three. You can use negative four comma five also, okay. as long as that's one of the two coordinates being used. And I plug in the y is negative 3 and the x is 2. Now then I will solve for b. The reason is that b will be uh, part of the solution we need. Right. The equation of the line is something looks like this, but we need to find what that b is. So then I go on with my computation. This is negative 3 equals to negative 8 over 3 plus b. So I add 8 over 3 both sides. That's negative 9 over 3 plus 8 over 3 equals to B. So B is negative 1 third. Finally, the equation of the line is therefore given by Y equals to negative 4 third X minus 1 third. Professor, did you like teaching better standing up or sitting down? That's a matter. Ah, for me, I like standing up instead. Like, I don't want to sit around all day. It makes you lazy. It's okay for me. That's for part A. We have a equation of a line. Now, part B, find the equation of the circle whose diameter is a segment with n points. So we have a diameter of a circle with n points negative 4 comma 5 negative uh, and then 2 comma negative 3. Now the question is we need to find the equation. To find that equation we need two things though. The equation of a circle always requires two things. First you need to find the center in this case is the the midpoint of the those two points. Second we need to find the radius. Was there was a cinnamon for center? What's, what's what? cinnamon for? What's a sin, sin, how do you say it? Cinnamon? Synonym for center? Can we also say origin point? Uh, no, origin refers to 0, 0. Oh, okay, okay. System, and so. it's not 0, 0 right smack in the middle? Or is it just plain old 0? Zero, zero, that's a line. Yes, that's a coordinate. Yes. Yes, yeah, because yes. this is two dimension, so the, if you say origin in two dimension, that refers to zero, zero coordinate. Wait, like we're in three. two dimension? How do we get there? I thought we were three dimensionals. Uh, if we have X and Y axis only, then that's two dimension. X and Y represent just two dimensions? That's right. Are there more dimensions? Yes. But only X and Y matter right now, right? That's right. Yeah, that's how I like to think about it. Just X, just me, X, and Y. I like to refer them to me as 10X. So, so this will be negative 1, comma 1. That's the center. Now the radius. 
Mr. What's up with your background? That sounds really loud back there. Nothing's here. Oh, okay. Anyway. Right here, square. Yes, huh? Oh, no, I was just saying. Anyway, let's carry on with the lesson. Okay, so R squared is the distance squared will be. R stands for radius, right? That's right. Got you. So X2, let me use 2 minus the X of the center squared plus the Y2 minus the Y of the center squared. That will be 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. That's 9 plus 16. So R squared equals to 25. Therefore, R is Mister, equal to... Not gonna lie, where'd you get 25 from? Nine plus 16. All right, all right. Then but we get what about, the, the, what about the rest of the numbers that are, that are chilling next to R squared? Like the three, the flying two, the plus, the four in parentheses, the negative four in parentheses, I mean, and then the we, other flying two. We get this, we get three from there. Why we can't we just solve, uh, solve it as we go? That's what I did. Hold on, where, when? I just oh, computed. You're going from left to right. Uh, no, I, I just I just computed as usual. Like, uh, okay, what are you I gonna like going to do from, with? I like going from top to bottom. You know, work my way down. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, do you have question. different? Is this your preferred teaching style? Uh, this is the teaching styles that is done by even my instructor too. So. Yeah, I don't really follow what the instructions say. I usually they usually get me extra lost. Like they simplify it every year, but every year it only confuses me more. I guess I'm just too stupid. <laughs> uh, we have the question of that circle. Now find the y intercept. Uh, to find y intercept, the x always equals to zero. We set the x equals to zero. So we get one squared plus y minus one squared equals to 25. One plus y minus one. I will keep that one my uh, y minus one squared uh, because it's already a perfect square. Uh, my plan is very soon I will Can use- Can you explain to me a perfect square? square? Property. Something by, square. By perfect square, do you mean like all four corners, right? Uh, the perfect square means something square. That's all it means. But why do they say squared? Like where? Like I, I don't know. Somebody somebody actually said that they, we call that square. That's why I call that square. But what what's the square mean? Is that like the square like the power like, of two? Like ne like the cousin of a rectangle or something like that? Uh, I, I don't want to sound too stupid. This. <laughs> uh, I but don't like, know because you sound like you never really take a algebra one and geometry. Nah, Mister, I blew right through that. But good thing. I How never can came you up end up here? Uh, and just never came up again until I got to college, so I didn't have, really have oh, a reason to study. Well, but you, but but you know that in this class we assume that you know that. Oh yeah, yeah, you assume a lot, Mister. But I thought you just told me not to assume anything. Don't assume anything about other people. Yeah, and you assume that I knew stuff. Uh, that's in our syllabus. Why? Yeah, that in precalculus, the prerequisite for precalculus is algebra two and geometry. Yeah, but don't they correlate? Aren't they say? Aren't they part of the same family? Uh, that's what you need to have first before you come to this class. But aren't we going over basically algebra two and then calling it pre-calculus? Uh, no, if they are the same, then we don't call that pre-calculus. We just call that algebra two again. Oh, so essentially calling it pre-calculus is just a way to make us like stupid or something because pre no, I don't as think like so. it comes before calculus, like calculus is something different. Because Honestly, I never really understood that anyway. Well, but I don't, I don't want to sound too stupid, mister. Like, if, if I sound too stupid or anything, like, stop me. Because I could keep asking questions all day. So from that equation of a circle we have in part B. Now then the follow up in part C, find the y-intercept. But keep in mind, even though both of these uh, two tests that I gave in the past, I asked y-intercept, I may just ask the x-intercept instead. By y-int, do you mean when the y cross, I mean, 
when something crosses the y axis on the two dimensional plane? Yes, that's what y intercept mean. All right, I got you. And the x, x intercept is basically the same thing. Yes, but the but, other way. Yes, that's right. The y is zero. Can you explain to me how two dimensions work again? Uh, it's only x and y? So far. Oh. Yeah. In Ben 10, they say that there's like 27 other dimensions, but only like, I mean, there's a, yeah, a even lot more. It, there are a lot there are a lot more but of course we can't yeah, go to yeah but i don't care about the rest i only care about the one i'm currently in that's that's one and even if you care and i like, it, you start I like from it how it is the second dimension even so if you care right yeah uh, how, can you explain to me the first dimension is that just the um, that's just number line. basically that's just okay. number line what came before the number line a point a point what's the point mean it's a point like, is that the origin or everything? It doesn't started? have to be. It's and then just everything continues to expand from there? Yeah. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Sort of like how the universe works, right? Like how the Big Bang started at a single point, and then from there it expanded so it continued into a continuous spectrum? Do you mean like that? You can see it that way, but that's oh, not I got the you, only I got way you, mister. Uh, this equation, find the equation of a line perpendicular to this line. Let's call this line one. Professor? Okay, and then, yes? Do you ever have fun? I do have fun. How do you have fun? I have my way to have fun. Your what? I have my way to have fun. Your weight? I have my way, my own way to have fun. How do you have your own way to have fun? How do you have fun? No, I, if you, if... If I have my own way to have fun, I don't need to explain that to you. Right? Oh, that's true. That's your personal business. I shouldn't. Yeah. In, I shouldn't. Um, per. Uh, I forgot how to word it, man. It's been a while since I've been at school. You know how it be. When you're just lazy and you sit around all day, you don't really care about school or anything like that. But this semester, I'm kind of going to try. That's why I'm going to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. You have been asking me questions. All right, I got you. I got you. And can I continue asking you questions? Yeah, but keep it to precalculus only, though. Of course, but if the things that precalculus correlates with other things, can I reference them? Yeah, yeah, but you still, if I tell you that it doesn't correlate, then I go back to my topics, right? And can you explain all this during office hours too? Yeah, you can ask me during gotcha, office gotcha. hours. That'll be better. Like, is that when you have fun? I have my, I have fun I mean, my I own mean, way. I mean, I mean, it's just like, it doesn't have to be related to everything to have fun. Why not? Why yes? Why can't, why can't you make math fun? <laughs> why yes? That's a perfect answer. That's that's right? exactly what I was looking for. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to go one way and our way. You know. Right? Yeah, but why can't I have it my way, Burger King style? But if there's your way, then it must be my way too. <laughs> well, if you're having so, it your way, then I want at least like. Unfortunately, know, I'm the instructor. All right, all right, I got, I got you. <laughs> unfortunately, so you have to learn from me. I mean, earn your instructor such that people can listen to you. Oh, okay. So it's when it's my turn to talk, I can speak my mind, basically, right? Uh, yeah. And but still, because this is a precalculus class, then I speak my mind about what this class is. All right. You know, I I should not use this class to talk about my own stuff. But why That's were you not, so funny on the first day? And now you're kind of kind of losing my interest. I I didn't try to be funny on the first day, actually. Mister, but you came off as so comical, you caught my attention. And now that you're no longer. Uh, I, I don't know, but but as I remember in the first day of class, I sound really, really harsh. I did tell oh. students that if you cannot really be mature in this class, drop the class. That's what I said oh, in the yeah, first day yeah, of class. Yeah. Am I too uh, immature for this class? I don't know. You ask yourself. Nah, let's carry on. Let's pretend like nothing happened. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, um, where are we? You kind of lost me when you stopped explaining um, your steps. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I keep on going with my written explanation, even if you ask me something else. But can you uh, say it yeah. verbally? Can you explain it verbally as well? I, I can if you interrupt me for something else. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, Professor. by the way, you know this is recorded, right? Yeah, I know it's recorded. Yeah. Uh -huh, what about okay. it? Yeah, that, so that you can review that later on. Yeah, I'm not afraid to sound stupid in front of other people. I sound no, stupid no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm saying that you can review this later on. Yeah, what about Not for it? other people. Then you can, yeah. I remind you. I know what I'm doing. That. Yeah, huh? that's, that's I'm good. I'm conscientious of my own actions. I know the consequences. Anyway, what about That's it? good. So line two. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to learn. 
Why? Y equals to 10 I know I'm yelling over here. Three You're speaking X. like normally. Why are you whispering? Anyway, mister. And then Whoa. we have line two passing through negative six comma two. So I plug that in. So you see the procedure we have here is very similar to what we did here. After we get the slope, I plug that into the slope intercept form. The plan is to get the B. And that's what I do again in this number two. We get the slope of line two. I denote it by M subscript two. Okay, such that my line two is Y equals to 10 over three X plus B. Now then uh, I plug in the coordinate in line two, y equals to two, x is negative six, two equals to negative 20 plus b, so b equals to 22. Now with that, then we have line two is given by y equals to n over 3x plus 22. Now, but one thing though, uh, one thing, the thing is to, to, to emphasize that the equation that we have earlier was in general form, not slope intercept form. This is in- What's the difference between slope, info, slope intercept form and general form? Uh, slope I never intercept really got form, slope, is slope that, intercept is, is form. Rope, is slope the one that went rise over run? That's right. Uh, what, how, uh, which one comes first, rise, right? And then we run? That's right. I got you, mister. Now, the line one is given to us in general form, ax plus by equals to constant. So according to tradition, our final answer is supposed to be in general form also. Okay. Now I remember in this test, when I gave this test in 417, when student gave me this answer, I was okay. But uh, in long run, uh, I prefer you to observe that this is actually in uh, general form. So your, our final answer is supposed to be in general form also. So I move the 10 over 3x, subtract by 10 over 3x. Hey, Professor, 3X. sorry, but like, can you explain general form real quick? Can, can we like review that? <laughs> uh, general form is ax <laughs> plus by equals to c. That's general form. What was it? A X plus B Y equals to C. Yes, What's that mean? So I, I I mean I mean of course if you're okay with me asking I don't want to sound stupid or anything like that. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, Ooh. well, A X and B Y on the same side. The coefficient, the variable terms on one side, and constant on the other side. That's yeah, where did A X come from though? That's the general form. Oh, so general form means that the variable terms on the same side and constant on the other side. Now, so this is general form. What I try to do now is to convert my final answer into general form. So instead of slope intercept form, y equals to mx plus b. Mr. M stands for slope, right? That's right. Got you. And then uh, let me multiply by three. And we usually don't like to have the leading coefficient, in this case, the coefficient of x to be negative. So multiply by, by negative one. By coefficient, do you mean like, what do you mean by that? Coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So oh, and can that number be anything? AX, yeah, can be anything. Oh, can we call, uh, can, can we even say it's zero X? Zero X means just zero. But yes, okay, you okay. can, uh, zero X means, the if you see zero X means the coefficient of that X is zero. Okay. That's for question number two. Hmm. Number three, we have not learned that yet. We will learn that in, I think, the middle of chapter two. Can, can you go over it? So just in case I, I get like a reference when I go for, to chapter two. 
uh, I have not even go over that. So you can watch my lesson. So when I say if I refer to the lesson, I refer to this one here that on the announcement. Let me log in again. Oh, wait, Mr. You're still screen sharing. I don't want to catch your password. I guess I didn't get it. In the announcement, you see announcement four. So we have, please watch lesson X before meeting number X. This is meeting number yeah, four. I, I kind of oh, listen you have, to them. Uh huh. Yeah, but um, I like asking you questions in person. I mean, like questions over the our communication devices. Now the reason is like if you don't if you don't watch them first, what kind of question you're gonna ask me? Well, I don't know the questions that. Well, when it doesn't make sense to me, I'll like ask you if, if uh, that's okay with you, of course. But that's that's why you need to watch that first. I did, but I still have questions. I have questions of things that I didn't understand on there. Okay, tell me which part that you don't you don't get from lesson one. Uh, if we go to lesson one, I'm not really sure. <laughs> you kind of lost. How about lesson one or lesson two? Um, I kind of only watched lesson one. Not gonna lie to you. Okay, so you still behind for lesson two, three, four. I got you. And should I watch them all in one day? You're supposed to have watched it since the first day of class. Oof. And why is that subject coming up again then if we, we already knew that? Uh, because it seems like you didn't do it. It doesn't matter what we know. If you don't do it, then you still. Oh, that's true. Okay. I forgot to mute my mic. Can you hear the background sounds? A lot. Oh, sorry about that. I'm outside. Now I go to the next ones. Unfortunately, number four, five, and six still not doable for us, but let me skip to number eight. Number eight is solve me equations. So when I write my test, I usually don't write it down in order of the topics we learn in class. It's kind of like uh, I put things together, even for one question like this number seven here, right? Number seven here. When we answer the question of y intercept and x intercept, that's actually something we can do already for this number seven. Let me go back to that one later on, okay? Just to let you know that it's something we have done before. But then because I put that in one function, then using that one function, we can ask a lot of questions from there. Now let's see number six first. I need to factor this part first here so that we know what's the LCD. Uh, that will be X minus five, X plus three. When I multiply by the LCD, x plus 3, x minus 5. Then we get on the first term, x plus 3 will cancel. Then we get 6 times x minus 5. Okay, you see that this part here, x plus 3 cancels. So I have only x minus 5 multiplied by 6. That's how we have get this. Okay, that's for the first term. Let's go on to the second term, minus seven over x minus five multiplied by x plus three x minus five. So x minus five cancels, we have only seven times x plus three. So that's equals to negative 48. Now then I will solve it from here. Okay, I will solve it from here. It becomes linear equation already. Add this three bit first, oops. Simply kind of combine like terms. So negative x equals to 3, x equals to negative 3. Now, before we 
conclude this, keep in mind that when we multiply by x plus 3, x minus 5, we are saying that x cannot be negative 3 and x cannot be 5. Basically, you notice the denominator. X cannot be negative 3, X cannot be 5, because otherwise it will be undefined on either one of them, or actually in this case, uh, two of them. Okay, now because X equals to negative 3 is one of the num numbers that we're supposed to avoid because it makes the denominator zero. Therefore, uh, the whole equation becomes undefined. Uh, then we will cancel that solution and say no solution. because of one candidate that we have that x equals to negative three makes the denominator becomes one of the denominator becomes zero therefore the whole equation becomes undefined number nine <clears throat> we have two radicals here two terms of radicals we will isolate one of them let me move this guy to the right hand side so I have square root of 3x minus 2 equals to 1 plus square root of 2x minus 3. Then I will square both sides. Professor, um, sorry about this, but do you mind like if I do the things that the other people did and then come back and watch the recorded lesson maybe later? Yeah, yeah, that's what most of them are doing. All right, I got you, I got you. I'll, see, I'll catch you later okay. on your next class. Okay, and then I foil this becomes one plus. All right, toodles. Two, two x minus three plus the square of that square root is two x minus three. Okay, Morten. Yeah. Give me a second. Uh, then, uh, so remember what I did here. Remember what I did here is actually doing a plus b quantity squared, which supposed to give us three terms. Okay, a squared plus two a b plus b squared. Okay, so this is my a squared by two a. A two a b right that's what we get and then the last term is the b squared so the square root disappear what i will do next is i will combine like terms on the right hand side i get 2x minus 2 plus 2 square root of 2x minus 3 And then I will isolate the radical. I subtract by 2x and then add 2. Oh, the 2 cancel, huh? Plus 2 cancel. So I get x equals to 2 square root of 2x minus 3. Now, from here, we can actually divide by 2 and then square both sides. But we can also square both sides right away. We can also square both sides right away. Just be a bit careful that uh, this is 2 times radical, not 2 plus radical. If that were two plus radical, then you need to move the two. But two times something will give, uh, two times that radical will give us four times two x minus three. Is it okay? Now then I will distribute and set one side because this is quadratic, right? So set one side equals to zero after that. And then solve x minus four. Oh, sorry, x minus 6, x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals to 6, x equals to 2. Now, the thing is somewhere in between, we square both sides. Somewhere in between, we square both sides. So I need to check each one of my solution. Let me do the check here. And x equals to 6, what happened? So square root of 3 times 6 minus 2 minus square root of 2 times 6 minus 3 is it equals to 1. Hmm. Am I doing it right? 
why somehow I feel like I did something wrong? I don't have any typo, right? Let's write six and two. Okay, so uh, this will be square root of 16 minus square root of nine, dc equals to one. Four minus three, dc equals to one. One equals to one, that's a check. How about when x equals to two? Square root of three times two minus two, minus, minus square root is way too long. minus square root of two times two minus three is it equals to one. So that's square root of six minus two, that's square root of four minus square root of one is it equals to one. Oh, that's check also. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, I don't expect to have both solutions work. So in this case, the solution will be x equals to six, x equals to two. Okay, now that's for number nine. Let me go back here. Let me go back here to this number seven. I told you that uh, even though it consists of many parts uh, and we can, we are not done with all of this yet, but there are some parts here we can do already. For example, the y-intercept. To find y-intercept, we set the x equals to zero f0 equals to two times negative, absolute of negative three minus two, that's two times three minus two, that's equals to four. I mean, six minus two, which is four. So the y-intercept is 0, 0,4. Now, how about the x-intercept? The x-intercept is by setting the fx equals to zero. So this is two absolute of x minus three minus two, we set that equals to zero. So nothing really new, right? It's just like our x intercept, y equals to zero and then so for x. So I move the two, divided by two, and then absolute of blah equals to one means blah equals to one or blah equals to negative one. So x equals to four, or x equals to two. That will be our x intercept, four comma zero, two comma zero. Okay, now the thing is later on, we still need to find the vertex, the domain and the range. Then we can put them all together. At least now we have these coordinates. We have zero comma four, we have four comma zero and <clears throat> and two comma zero. So we have these coordinates here uh, with more information we get, let's say on this Wednesday or next week, Monday, then we can graph this more accurately. But to do this, we need to go over, uh, I think the end of chapter, toward the end of chapter four, maybe somewhere or in chapter three already. Okay, let me go on. Number 10, number 10, x to the power of four thirds plus three to the power of two thirds minus 28. Notice that this guy here is the square of this guy and the other term is constant. So if I let uh, u equals to x to the two thirds now you can use y also, you can use t. Uh, just don't use x anymore, okay? Don't say let x equals to x to the two. No, 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 no. Okay, use other variable, but you have the freedom to use. Usually we use u for substitution. That's why in calculus we have something called u substitution. Okay, that's the term, u substitution in calculus. Uh, Uh, but we can use y also, like what I did earlier in the previous uh, uh, 
sample test that we did earlier, like the one here, I think, when I did the quadratic like equation, uh, when I did quadratic like equation, I used y, right? Okay. But you don't have to use y, you don't have to use u, you can use t, you can use a, just don't use x anymore, okay? Because x, you cannot define x in terms of x, okay? Now then I go back, uh, if u is x to the two thirds, then the first term here becomes u squared. Second term becomes minus uh, plus three u minus 28 equals to zero. It is factorable, remember in my class, if it is factorable, you need to factor it. So this is u plus u minus, and then 28, that's seven times four. So plus seven, minus four. So u1 is negative seven, u2 is four. Now then once I'm done with my u, then I bring it back to x term. So x to the power of uh, two thirds is negative seven. <clears throat> but x to the power of two thirds means that's the cube root of x being squared equals to negative seven. Now, the thing is something squared negative has no solution. No solution, why? Uh, maybe, yeah, because uh, something, I don't want to use it, something squared equals to negative seven is not a real, not real number. No real solution. Okay, unless we insist to go to complex numbers, but now in this class, we don't do complex numbers. So we just leave it like that, okay? Uh, something squared is a negative number implies no real solution. Uh, let's see the second branch. That's x to the power of two thirds equals to four. So cube root of x being squared equals to four. So cube root of x is plus minus two. I apply square root property. Okay. Then square root of cube root of x equals to two or cube root of x equals to negative two. Now I cube both sides. I get x equals to eight and x equals to negative eight. Okay, now notice that uh, I did square both sides somewhere here. You see, here I square both sides. So I supposed to check the final answer, right? I supposed to check the final answer. Uh, the good thing is the other side already positive. And I told you that uh, you can ignore, you can omit to be more precise. You can omit the checking part if you square both sides. Once the other side is positive number. Okay, if the other side is positive, you don't need to check. If the other side is negative, you don't need to go on because that's no real number. The only time you really need to check is when you square both sides, the other side has variable. Then you need to check that. Okay, that's the rule in my class. That's for number 10. Number 11. Solve absolute of something equals to two x minus one. Now we have uh, we have variable on the other side. We have variable on the other side. Uh, I remember I taught you how this type of question, right? I taught you this type of question, and uh, there are three different methods. <clears throat> I think what will I will go on is I will break them up into two parts find the solution. What I mean by break them up into two parts is I say x plus one equals to two x minus one or x plus one equals to the opposite of two x minus one. I will solve them first and then I check each solution against the original equation. Okay, so this one, uh, I add one both sides subtract by x. So x equals to two. So 3x equals to zero or x equals to zero. <clears throat> Check. 
when x equals to 2, will that give us the correct answer? Absolute bar of 2 plus 1 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1. That's absolute of 3. Is it equals to 4 minus 1? 3 equals to 3. Let's check. <clears throat> How about when x equals to zero? Absolute of zero plus one is it equals to two times zero minus one. Absolute of one is it equals to negative one. This is definitely wrong because absolute of something can never be negative. Okay, so we conclude so x equals to two. Okay, now that's for number 11. Number 12, we will be doing that number 12 on uh, Wednesday, okay? Because lesson number five will be on inequality. Okay, make sure you watch that lecture. And if you can watch the recording for tomorrow also. Okay, but I, I think the lecture is okay. Now, that's for number 12, right? Number 13, also based on uh, uh, solving inequalities that we will do in lesson five, okay? But the idea is this, the idea is this. Uh, once you know how to solve this, once you know how to solve this rational inequality, then we will be able to solve this question. Find the domain of this function, basically, we need to solve this. The guy inside the radical, the radicans, we call that, the radicand, has to be non-negative. Okay, the guy inside the radical, okay, that's square root, right? It means the guy inside the radical, this guy here, this guy here, has to be positive or zero. Okay, that's what we will solve on uh, <clears throat> on Wednesday. Okay. Assuming that you watch lesson five. Let me go on further. Uh, this is something we see in the last section of our, uh, I think that's our lesson six or even lesson seven already. Okay, so I'm done with all my previous tests. You know what? This is question number one. You know what? Uh, would you like to try this question number six, D and E? I think that one is doable though. Right now it's 11.09. Uh, let me give myself a break for 10 minutes. And uh, another five minutes, I would like you to do this problem, okay? So we have this function here. And the question is to find the y-intercept and x-intercept. Okay, so we come back in 15 minutes from now. Uh, 15 minutes from now will be 11.25. So including your break, uh, 10 minutes and then five minutes to do this uh, part D and E, the one I highlight in yellow. Okay, see you later. The Y intercept, just like before, basically find out what's the Y when X equals to zero. So this is four minus three square root of zero plus two. That's four minus three square root of two. Not a nice number, but that's the simplest we can get. So the y-intercept will be 0, 4 minus 3 square root of 2. Now, this is the answer I want. <clears throat> okay. You can convert that to decimal using your calculator for the purpose of finding that coordinate on uh, our graph later on. Okay. But the y-intercept earlier at least you write it in exact form first, okay? What we mean by exact form means you don't do any rounding, okay? Uh, just leave it like that. <clears throat> we use calculator to find the decimal to find uh, the coordinate approximate location when we try to sketch them. X intercept, we set the Y equals to zero. And then I solve it. So I move 
3 radical x plus 2. And then divide it by 3. Or you can square first. Okay, you can square first. But let me divide by 3 and then square. I get 16 over 9. So x will be 16 over 9 minus 2. I get x equals to negative 2 over 9. So the x-intercept is negative 2 over 9 comma 0. <clears throat> okay. By the way, suppose you square both sides here. So you get 3 square root of x plus 2 plus 2, 4, and then you square both sides. You'll get the same answer. You will get 9 times x plus 2 equals to 16, 9x plus 18 equals to 16, 9x equals to negative 2, so x equals to negative 2 over 9. Okay, that's just another alternative. Why? Because uh, we have 3 times radical instead of 3 plus. <clears throat> Now that's for the x and y intercept. Actually, we can answer the question of domain here. The domain of this function, actually, uh, as long as this guy is not negative, as long as the guy inside the square root, the, as long as inside the square root or the fourth root or the sixth root, even index, okay, as long as it is even index, then the guy inside the radical has to be non-negative. How about odd index? Suppose that's a cube root instead. Now for cube root, it's okay for positive or negative. Okay, for a cube root, it will be okay for positive or negative. So with that mindset, then we just need to set that x plus two to be non-negative. In other words, x is greater than, greater or equals to negative two. In interval notation, that will be from negative two to infinity. Okay, I think we can do that one already. For the range and vertex, we need to wait until uh, this Thursday, I believe, when we go further into graphing. It is possible that we already got get into graphing uh, on tomorrow, lesson, lesson five or lesson six. I don't remember precisely. Okay, but that part has to wait. So the one I mark in blue, let me mark them in blue. The one I mark in blue needs to wait until this Wednesday or maybe uh, Monday. Okay, the one I mark in blue needs to wait. The one I mark in blue needs to wait. But at least we did we know part of that over here. Right? The one I mark in blue needs to wait. This needs to wait. This needs to wait. I think the uh, number 14 is that we need to uh, we need to wait until lesson seven. That's uh, the topic is a uh, piecewise defined function. But I see that we can actually do one more problem from this test with what we have learned so far. We can do number four. We can do number four. Let's see this is question number four here. Okay, we have this function. It's a rational function, something over something. Okay, now part A, find the domain of the function. Now, if you have a rational function, then the domain will be all real number except the zero of the denominator, except when this denominator becomes zero. So from here we see that x three uh, x plus two cannot be zero, right? Otherwise it becomes undefined. But when you solve this, you get x equals to uh, x cannot be negative two thirds, right? Okay. 
uh, on the number line, you can see the, the solution, the domain is everything except this one number. Everything except that one number. Now, what will that be in interval notation? Negative infinity up to negative two thirds union, negative two thirds up to infinity. Okay. <clears throat> Now, in my class, I also allow you to write using this notation, all real number except negative two thirds. So if you have all real number, but you need, you need to exclude some coordinates, uh, some points, then that's what you can do, okay? And I consider this also as interval notation, even though it's not technically, it's not interval notation. But in my class, I would just call that interval notation. Part B is definitely something you can solve also, okay? Uh, solving this equation, but this time, instead of solving for a uh, number, we have two variable here. We want to solve for X, okay? We want to solve for X. So how do we solve for X? Basic, what does it mean to say solve for X if you have more than two variable in an equation? Solve for X means you have X equals to something, okay? But on the other side, no more X. In other words, when we say solve for X means we isolate the X on one side, <clears throat> okay? Now, uh, let's take a look on how to do this problem. Not too hard, trust me, when I say you can do it means it's doable. Uh, think of this as an equation where the Y is like a constant. So to solve this equation, I will multiply by the LCD. So I get Y times three X plus two equals to one minus four X. Three times X Y plus two Y equals to one minus four X. Remember, I need to have X by itself on one side. Okay, so everything with X term, I set it to one side. Let me put the four X to the left-hand side. And then the one without uh, X, I push them to the right-hand side in this case. So subtract by 2y. Now, the key step is actually in the factoring. I will factor the x. That's the key step. Most students know to multiply by the LCD, but then they just lose it once they cannot do factoring the x. But what's, once you know that you can factor the x, then you can go on, divide by that uh, factor, 3y plus 4. And that's it, we are done. Maybe so for X already. Okay. <clears throat> now that question is important because the follow-up question is actually the following. The follow-up question from here is this. Now we know how to find the domain for this function. That's actually question part A. Now what if we ask, what's the range of this function? One way to find the range of this function is to solve for x, okay, solve for x, and then see what kind of y you can use here. So you treat that as if that's, we are looking for the domain, but this time we look for the y's instead, which give us the range, okay? Now this technique is later on known as one technique to find the range of a function. Now, not all function can be found the range. You see, we can, not, not for every function, we can find the range using this method. But it's, this method is good enough to solve a lot of problems that we didn't expect, or a lot of range problem that we didn't expect doable by other method, okay? Uh, let me see, we, I have done all problems we can do up to this point. Let's see, go back to spring 17 question. If there's any more question we can do. Done with three. Number four is not doable yet. Okay, so we postpone it until Wednesday or maybe Monday next week. Okay, number six, uh, we will be able to do it on Wednesday, but again, the domain of square root function means the guy inside the house has to be non-negative. 
Now, how to solve non-linear equation, rational inequality, I'm sorry, I should say non-linear inequality, uh, we need to wait until lesson five, which you can watch already uh, through, yeah, on lesson five. Okay, tomorrow I'll do more problems from textbooks regarding lesson five. <clears throat> Number five, uh, we cannot do that yet. But of course, this type of question, uh, every time I give you a function, uh, question, the question of the x-intercept r or y-intercept are actually standard questions, okay? Uh, the question of x-intercept, y-intercept are standard question. But let's do this on uh, Wednesday or I think that's on Monday next week. <clears throat> I'm, I don't remember if it is from lesson five or lesson six that we learned that. Number seven. We can answer this. We can answer this too, the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Now, uh, the axis of symmetry, vertex and sketch the, gra the graph, uh, right in standard form, needs to wait until our next meeting. Okay, now how to find the y-intercept? Uh, when x equals to zero, you will see the first term is zero, the second term is zero, the last term is the constant. So the y-intercept is zero comma negative five over two. How about x-intercept, we set the y equals to zero and then solve this equation. Now how to solve this equation, you have many ways, but of course I do not think you should do uh, <clears throat> a quadratic equation right away. I will multiply by negative two. Okay, so zero times negative two is zero, negative one half times negative two is one. This would be plus six x plus five. Oh, this is factorable. Okay, so x plus 5, x plus 1. So I get x1 is negative 5, x2 is negative 1. Therefore, our x-intercepts are negative 5, comma, 0, negative 1, comma, 0. <clears throat> okay, let's see further. If there's more things we can do. Uh, compound functions we have not done yet. Instead, uh, composition composition of function, as I remember, is not part of the, your test one later on. We will not do that. Number nine, uh, we cannot do this yet. But yeah, let's let's do this later. I think we can do part A, but uh, no, let's let's do it other time. This for number nine. Number 10, that's piecewise defined function, we cannot do yet. And number 11, that's notation, we cannot do yet. Oh, number 12, we can do already. We can do number 12 already. In fact, uh, I think we can graph this also. <clears throat> the hint is very big hint. The hint I, have, I give you here is very big hint. What I, I'm about to do right now has a lot to do with my last lesson from solving absolute value equation. Okay, now here's the thing. Uh, this one is a bit more difficult. Let's see the critical number first, critical numbers. Uh, we need to know uh, when will x plus three be positive or zero or negative. We need to know x minus two positive or negative. Okay, so let's set them up to zero first to find the critical numbers. So we know critical numbers are x equals to negative three and x equals to two. Now this way, then we see our intervals, our cases will be divided into three parts. The first one greater equals to two, that's the first case. The second case is from negative three, including negative three up to not including two. And the last case is from negative infinity to up to uh, less than negative three. Okay, that's our third case. Now we try to do this as uh, the following. We'll graph this later though. 
we'll graph this later. We, we, we will need to wait until next week to finish this fully. But I give you the idea first, what we will do. We'll see case one. That's this case here where, where uh, x is greater equals to two. Now, if x is greater equals to two, what happened to x plus three? It'll be greater equals to two plus three, which is five. Okay, but for sure, x plus three is greater or equals to zero, right? We want to know in this interval here, what happened to x plus three and what happened to x minus two, okay? Uh, because x plus three is positive or zero, then absolute x plus three may be replaced by x plus three. X minus two is greater or equal to two minus two, which is zero, so x minus two is also non-negative, we will replace absolute of x minus two by x minus two only. Therefore, in the first case, fx becomes x plus three plus x, um, I'm sorry, minus x minus two. x plus three to replace absolute x plus three minus x minus two to replace absolute x minus two. The bomb, the boom, this is fine. How about case two? Case two when X is, when X is between greater or equals to negative three, but less than two. When I add three, when I add three, then I get x plus three is greater or equals to negative three plus three. Maybe I do it this way. I do it this way. So x plus three will be between negative three plus three and plus three, which is five. Okay, but then from here we see absolute of x plus, uh, I mean, x plus three is non negative because it's greater or equals to zero. Therefore, in case two, in, the, in this interval, we will replace absolute of x plus three by simply x plus three. Now, what happened to x minus two? Subtract by two, subtract by two, subtract by two, right? From here, so subtract each side by two. But then you will see that x minus two is actually negative. In other words, we will substitute absolute of x minus two in this interval as negative x minus two. So in this case two, fx will be absolute of x plus three replaced by x plus three minus absolute of x minus two, which we replace by negative x minus two. At the bottom of the boom, this is 2x plus 1. Case 3, let me do it here. On the left hand side, case 3, where x is less than negative 3, which means x plus 3 is less than 0, and x minus 2 is less than negative 5. That's definitely less than 0. So we will substitute absolute of x plus three by negative of x plus three. We will substitute absolute of x minus two by negative x minus two. So the function in this interval will be negative x plus three minus the opposite of x minus two. Substitute again, uh, Distribute combined like terms, I get negative five. So later on, what do you need to graph? So you need to graph this, fx is equal to five for x greater or equals to two. That's the blue part, the blue, the blue case. Okay. 
fx equals to 2x minus uh, plus 1 for x between negative 3 and 2. And the last case, uh, let, me use, let me use this color. Last case. So this is the yellow color. That will be fx equals to negative 5 for x less than negative 3. Okay. Now we will learn how to graph uh, sometime or in lesson five or lesson six, okay? And that becomes piecewise defined function, okay? But how to set it up? It's something we already learned. We just didn't learn that explicitly though. We didn't learn this explicitly. We didn't learn this explicitly, okay? We did learn this implicitly. That's for the last question here. Uh, I think for the rest, yeah, we need to wait until we need to wait until uh, our next meeting. Okay, any question? No question. Now let me put one more announcement from me that you have quiz two three. do this weekend this do this weekend this saturday it requires uh, up to lesson five to do that quiz it requires up to lesson five but most of them, actually around two thirds of that quiz is doable already at this point. So don't wait until, don't wait until I'm, uh, you are done with lesson five, then start working on that. No, 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 no. Uh, you can do most of that already right now. There's only one or two problems from that quiz that requires you to do uh, solving uh, polynomial or rational inequalities, which is in our lesson five, uh, which you can also already watch from the lecture. In fact, I saw some students already turn in this quiz two, three. Okay, but don't wait until last minute though. Don't wait until last minute. In the last two days, actually, uh, yesterday I have one email, today I have three emails asking me, Thomas, can I turn in late homework? And my answer is no, I already say that. Okay, if I do allow you to do a makeup quiz like turning it late, what's the point of me giving it earlier? Okay, the reason I give it earlier so that you can do it earlier and you don't need to wait until last minute to do it. Okay, to work on that. Especially quiz one only relies on lesson one, as I remember, at most lesson two. <clears throat> okay, not a hard one, not a hard one. That, that one is easy ones. So I have students, actually two students say they don't have the book yet. Uh, no. Uh, the thing is like the issue of book already being resolved on the first day of class. <clears throat> Some students actually share the link on how to get the book temporarily on PDF file while you wait for the actual book coming in the mail, right? So we solved that already, okay? And of course you don't give me that kind of excuse last minute. You want to tell me that about that Thomas, I don't have the book. You want to tell me that a lot in advance, even if that's your uh, excuse, then I would have told you that you can find the book from where, from where, from where, okay? At least the temporary one, the PDF file, right? Uh, uh, you don't give me that excuse after you miss the deadline, okay? And I hope it doesn't happen anymore in future. I do not accept uh, late submission anyway, okay? So uh, let's meet again on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I plan to do more problems from this September, uh, spring 17 and fall 17, I may give you one more test one from other semester uh, on Wednesday. Okay, see you then. Thank you. You're very